कुछ को नहीं रह सकता स्पीक ऑयल प्लीज लेट यू रेफर फर्स्ट यू फ्लैक एट दिसन दिस सिचुएशन ऑफ गॉड टू देशन ऑफ स्पीक ऑयल इन लीडरशिप बाय इंस्पेक्टर जनरल ऑफ पुलिस who brief the leadership and based on the briefing of the inspector general the leadership derived to inviting the honorable deputy minister so if ask me to explain i will proceed based on plenary mandate <laughs> on friday evening i received a call from my legislative staff It started by working in the budget session of the legislature, Mr. Kerry Matari. Mr. Matari sent me a text that he had been arrested by the NSA and the police on order of Deputy Minister Eugene Fargo and was taken to the Zunti Police Depot. I drove at the police depot. I met with the police. I asked the police. The police explained to me what has happened: that Mr. Kevin Matali was taken to the police station along with an NSA agent on orders of the Deputy Minister for Information, Mr. Eugene Lamine Fagon. Uh, the police further explained that Mr. Fagon said he was dancing, and his photograph was taken by Mr. Lamine, Mr. Matali, sir, Mr. Matali. And they have searched Mr. Matali's phone, and Mr. Mat uh, Mr. Fagon's photo was not in the phone. But now we're speaking. The NSA insisted that the NSA agent insisted that there was an equipment at the office that we take the phone there, decode the phone, so if any message was in it, the photograph going into our cloud or messenger or, or Google, they will retrieve the message and the, 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 the photograph and destroy it. So I asked the police, "Can I sign for me?" No, 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 no. I asked the police if I would sign for Mr. Matali. The police said they would get back to me. After a few minutes, the police get a place of telephone call and came by and said I could not sign for Mr. Matali. I then called the director, the inspector general of police. I did not get him. I call the Honorable Minister of Information, who has always respected this legislature, this first branch of government. Unfortunately, I found him was traveling, and I could not get the Minister Eugene Nanu. I call the National Security Advisor, who said he was going to call Minister Fagon and get back to me. And after I waited for over ten minutes, I didn't hear from National Security Advisor. I, re I returned. I call him again. He said he had spoken with Mr. Fagon. He was calling the NSA. I waited to know a few. Then I called Minister Fagon and asked him to please come to the police station, return the legislative staff or staff of this legislature, return his phone, and release the boy from prison because it was abuse of power to get the National Security Agency involved in dancing in the nightclub and someone taking a picture in the public square. It was abuse of power. Mr. Bagon <coughs> began to give me some food for talk. So he drove out of the police station. I was alone, no driver, no security, because the government is doing well with security. The time is peaceful. So we, the legislature, don't need security sometimes. They move alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was there alone. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bagon came and started reading insults. Because I was alone, I decided to record him and note facing on notice. I was recording him. I didn't want to record him illegally. I said, I'm recording him. He said, record. Mr. Speaker, I respect my colleagues here and people in the gallery. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot repeat, but you have the recording. I think we can play if you want to. Or if my phone, I can put it in my phone, you can hear what he said. But my parents, my mother will get upset with me and she this only if I repeat the way that was said. So I don't intend to do it. So, Mr. Bacon went on. Not only him, but he had two other security with him. I've seen them in the gallery here. They also started insulting me. And I called the police attention. I said, let me insulting me. The only thing they do the police, they do anything about it. 
the police broke as Joe Mr. Bagon was the president of this republic. Insulted me, he reminded me of my days with my former father-in-law. He reminded me of my days with Manasseri. I was tempted to tell you that even the current minister of my former father-in-law, Manasseri, but I didn't do that when I left him. I kept reminding him, sir, are you okay? And he educated me on legislative procedures and how to respect the deputy minister. <laughs> he insulted me as though we came from the ghetto. The police did nothing about it. When he attempted to leave, and fortunately for me, Mr. Fakon, as chief spoke member of the government, the deputy minister of press, for, for the public of press, public affairs, he decided to go live on Facebook as he had always done. He went on Facebook and continued to insult me live on Facebook. He went on, they bring in one camp code here for us. They bring this. So the, the president got one general will walk and he got one general. All I want to remind me of it. He didn't stop there. The boys were insulting me at the same time. Because the police could not do anything, I decided to leave. Kevin then me got a friend that didn't make a call to represent him. And that didn't happen, they didn't give me any change, no one can order you again. So apparently Kevin decided to put Kevin on that place behind the cell. And fortunately, to the benefit of my colleague, the Inspector General of Police were here, so he confirmed that. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin was never placed behind the cell, contrary to what Mr. Yuki Fabon placed on the social media. That Kevin was in the police cell and I'm going to release him. As I walked away, Kevin out of here apparently got up to, to follow the police talking down. That was when the police put him in the cell. Never did I enter the cell, nor did I interact with any police officer for our way where she ran. Did I interact with any police officer, nor with Mr. Kevin Atari. And fortunately, again, for the record, the Inspector General of Police was here yesterday, and he testified that Mr. Eugene Fagon had lied to the public, to the world. That I tried to force Kelvin out of police cell. I never did to act with Kelvin, never did to act with the police. I stood up because my mother trained me and trained me well. <laughs> so as I was insulted, I kept asking for more clarification. Even when I was asking for the media of CDC, at least you were able to tell me again that he was a democratic change. He insulted me to the letter. When I got through, in no time, the police came and hang off the staff of the legislature. He hang off the staff, the police hang off the staff to go to Central Police Station. Then I got a call from Obo Akaro's grave that he was watching Facebook Live, he was watching Facebook Live, and that he had seen what was obtained, so he went to find him. As we got to the Central Police Station, Obo Akaro's grave had arrived. He passed by me and went to Minister Fagon. He said, Minister Fagon, the president is in China and we're returning on Sunday. What you are putting on Facebook will take over the gains that the president has made in China and it will embarrass our government. Minister Fagon said, they will not embarrass our government, he said, but the Lord. And Minister Fagon now, at that point, he put me on recess and he started with Honorable Green. And he insulted on the grave. He, but I think my own better sir. Yeah. He insulted on the grave. He then stopped on the grave. He started discussing, and I'll not repeat it, he started discussing the vice president of the Republic of Liberia. Of the Republic of Liberia. At that portion, at that point, on the grave got upset. And on the grave said, if you discuss the vice president here, I will slap you at the police station. And Mr. Gray, I fight loud. Can I proceed, speaker? So, speaker, can I proceed? 
So at that point, yeah. Mr. Pago, when he started discussing the vice president, when he started discussing the vice president of a greater upset, and say, I will not have you discussing the vice president of the Republic of Liberia in such a manner. And if you continue discussing the vice president, Madam Jewel, Chief Director Jewel Howard Taylor, in this manner, I will slap you and say you can't do it. And he went all on the grid. Mr. Pakon, Mr. Speaker, he said so many things. And thereafter, the police said the boy should stay and we should go to the next day. But Mr. Speaker, because of your able leadership and the rule of law, and the, 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 the rule of law is limited by this honorable body, I think it's fair for us to add up play the recording yeah. so that the police can hear Minister Bakon's voice. Yes. And I'm happy that yesterday, Honor O, the Inspector General of Police here, and made it clear that Mr. Bagon lied on me, that I never interacted with the police, nor Mr. Kerry Matari, nor they are going to sell to force it or as was stated by Mr. Bagon on social media. So I expect, or I appeal to you, Mr. Speaker, a round of phone, I can even put it on the microphone, you will hear it, but the thing you are saying, if I say my mouth will just me today, I'm not prepared for, for that. <laughs> So, Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'm about to die, I was saying, you said that's true. Mr. Speaker, this is, a, this is partial account of what happened at the police cell, at the police station. But I want to publicly, before I give the microphone, extend thanks to my colleague of Akara's grave. Because among the many things Mr. Fakon did when Mr. Fakon's grave was there, Mr. Fakon tried to put a picture of United Party versus CDC. That he fought for the revolution of the CDC. And he was not going to treat Akara's grave on a friendship basis. That he suffered for the revolution. He even explained how much contribution, how much money he gave for a position. As you hear, speaker. They on the tape. But you are not saying sign away, throwing sign away, not saying sign away. He explained all of that, how much money he gave to be appointed as deputy minister. I have a recording. And I carry us great, Uncle Gray, and to the leadership of the CDC, and I speak as an opposition. The CDC. Akara's grave was clear that it was not on a party basis. That it was about the Republic of Liberia and it will not buy into public sentiments. So I want to make it clear that this has nothing to do with party politics. It has nothing to do with United Party for the CDC. It has to do with respecting the rule of law and respecting public officials. So Mr. Speaker, this is an account I stated it would have been a good idea. I gave you the CD yesterday. And I don't know if you have the CD, it will get played. But if you don't want to, you are the presiding officer, you can determine that. But what happened at the police station with the speaker? Uh, these are partial accounts of what happened. And it's left for you now in this plenary. If you want me to say anything more than this, or whatever it is, then we can proceed from there. Mr. Speaker, it's low, but you get a CD. I heard you hear it? Even at one point, when I told you, you reminded me that they were not a government of Ellen or Charles Taylor, but a government of Bakupe. I don't know who is Bakupe. So we can help us understand who is Bakupe. Bakupe, thank you.